There's one key thing to remember when you're working out standard deviation and variance from a table, and that is that you need to focus on the column to the left. This leftmost column is your most important column. Let's look at the question. Crystal completed a survey recording the time in hours that students in her class spent revising per week. The results are shown in the table. Calculate an estimate for the variance and standard deviation for these data. You are given that the sum of f of x squared is 14,062.5 for 7 marks. Now, these numbers over here wouldn't be given to you. I've just filled them in. But let's do it step by step. What was my key tip? Focus on the column to the left. Oops, let's do it in uh, yellow. Focus on this column over here. Now, the formulas for standard deviation and variance we already know on the left here. We have variance is the sum, sigma, of x squared divided by the number, take away the mean squared. So the x, the quantity that we're talking about, comes from the, this left-hand column. That's why I'm focusing on it so much. A lot of students get confused and they square the frequencies. But no, it's this quantity here that we need to focus on. First, the reason why we need to focus on it is because we need to find the midpoint. We don't know if they spent 5 hours revising, or 10 hours, or 8 hours, so we pick the midpoint. That's why we need to find the midpoint. We need to estimate the rough average amount of time spent for each of these groups. For this first group, between 5 to 10 is 7.5 hours. For the second group, between 10 and 15 is 12.5 hours, etc. So that's why we find the midpoint. You remember that to find the variance, we need to square all of the numbers. That's why it's 7.5 squared and 12.5 squared. You might wonder, though, why are we timesing it by 5? Why are we timesing it by 14? Well, because it isn't just one person who spent 7.5 hours, or one person who spent 12.5 hours. There were five students. So in a sense, we're doing 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared plus 7.5, etc. five times. But just to save time, we do 5 times 7.5 squared. So we're squaring all of these numbers and timesing them by the number of times they come up. Notice though, just to repeat, we're squaring the midpoints. We're not squaring the frequency. We're not doing 5 squared times 7.5 or 14 squared. We're always squaring the midpoints. This column on the left is your golden column. That's where we get f of x squared. After we get f of x squared, which by the way they've given us, always use the data that they give you. So we're told that the sum of f of x squared, so they've worked all this out and added it all up. That's what sigma means, the sum. We then have to divide by n. So let's start working it out already. We're told that the sum of f of x squared is 14,062.5. So let's put that here. That's the first part of our formula. And it's divided by the number of students there are, or the total frequency. In this case, we would just add it up. Let's see, 37, 42, 44, 50. 50 students. So divided by 50. Remember, on the right, it's slightly different. It's the mean squared. Well, you might remember from a table, to get the mean, you do midpoint times frequency. Midpoint times frequency. 12.5 times 14, 17.5 times 23, etc. That's how you find the mean from a table. Once you do that, we're going to add them all up. So we do that in our calculator. So 5 times 7.5, etc. And it gets to 805. Now, don't forget to get the mean. Once you've added them all up, we need to divide by how many there are. So again, we divide by 50. Now we're ready to start working it out. Let's type all of this into the calculator and try and do it in one go so we're not rounding at all. After typing that in, we get 22.04. So the variance is 22.04. Remember, the first thing you work out after you've done the square it, mean it, mean it, square it, you've worked out the variance. You haven't yet worked out the standard deviation. But simply to get the standard deviation, you square root your answer. I love standard deviation because you, all you have to do is square root your final answer and you get straight to the standard deviation. 
which is 